What is up everyone? Welcome back to Great Ace TV and today I'm going to be talking about the two-field John Doe also known as Septic Tank Sam. And this case was actually requested by one of you guys in the comments, so thank you very much. And uh, let's just get right into it. On April 13th, 1977 in Twofield, Alberta, which is a small town with a population of about 1,200 or so people, an unidentified man, later known as Sam, was found by a local couple scavenging their abandoned farmhouse for a septic tank pump. And after seeing his leg bobbing in their old septic tank, they contacted the Royal Canadian Mounted Police also known as the RCMP. Two officers then arrived at the scene where they spent the next hour using empty ice cream pails to empty the septic tank to recover Sam's body. Once they were able to empty the septic tank, they found the decomposed body wrapped in a yellow blanket and tied up with nylon rope positioned head first in the septic tank, which was about six feet deep. Quick lime was also found in the tank, which investigators believe was used to try and dissolve the body and speed up the rate of decomposition. However, unbeknownst to the killer or killers, when quick lime is combined with water, only a small degree of superficial burning will occur, with a large amount of body tissue becoming dried out, resulting in the body being relatively well preserved for the time it is spent in the tank which was later determined to have been between a few months to a year. And since the man didn't have an ID on him and RCMP couldn't identify him, he became known as Septic Tank Sam. Which I understand why they gave him that nickname. They wanted to give him a name that people would remember so the case hopefully wouldn't die at some point. It's obviously a lot easier to remember Septic Tank Sam than to feel John Doe, but it's still pretty sad that this man will always be remembered as Septic Tank Sam and not by something a little nicer. But even though police weren't able to identify him, after an autopsy they were able to figure out what most likely happened to him, and it's actually pretty sad when you get into the details. Investigating officers even described his death as one of the most vindictive and sadistic crimes that they had ever encountered. So first, it's believed that he was tied to a bed based on the burn marks on his shirt and beaten. Then he was burned with a small butane torch and cigarettes. And he was also sexually mutilated with farm shears so severely that it took the medical examiner several months to identify him as a man. So you can imagine how severely he was mutilated. But his actual cause of death was due to two gunshot wounds to his head and chest. Although it is believed that he could have been shot more times, and the bullets just weren't able to reach his skeleton, which were the only reasons they were able to identify the gunshot wounds to his head and chest. But after doing the autopsy, experts were also able to conclude that Sam, who was wearing a blue Levi shirt with snap buttons, a white t-shirt, blue jeans, and wallaby type shoes, was about 28 years old, so born around 1949, five foot six, right-handed, and white. They also believe that he was a laborer and suffered an illness around the age of five. And I was looking into how they were able to determine that and it's actually pretty interesting. So basically your teeth and your bones form circles as they age, sort of like how a tree does when you like cut into a tree, you see the rings and you can tell how old it is. Basically your bones and teeth do the same thing. So they were able to determine that around the age of five, he was sick because the circular rings were affected in a way that would happen around that age if he was sick at that age. So I thought that was pretty interesting. That's something that I would never have known if I didn't look into this, but I just thought that was a kind of a fun fact to throw in. Investigators also believe that Sam was a transient and not from Alberta, and that the homicide probably wasn't random due to the brutality of the crime. It's also suspected that Sam's killer or killers lived in Twofield or were at least very familiar with the area due to the fact that they put him in a septic tank that was only abandoned for about two years up to the point where his body was found. So there was a very small window for them to take his body there and stash it into that septic tank. And the idea that whoever committed this crime was a resident of Twofield absolutely horrified the Twofield residents. Farmers began to check their own septic tanks, looking for bodies, and business owners worried that Sam's killer or killers could have been regular customers in their establishments. Which, we all know when you live in a small town like that, when something that horrible happens, everyone's gonna talk about it, and it's, it's gonna scare everyone. But everyone's also gonna have their own rumors and speculations on what happened to this person and why it happened to him. And once the Twofield residents heard about the mutilation that was done to Sam, they believe that he must have committed a sex crime of some sort, 
or he cheated on his spouse. But I understand where those rumors and where those theories would come from. You kind of want to solve the case for your own, especially when it happened in your town and you're afraid of who did it. You kind of want to justify, like, okay, well, maybe they did it because he did, he was some kind of pedophile or he was cheating on his wife and she just took out revenge. You want to believe that before you believe that it was just some crazy person who came into town or some crazy person that you live near just decided to kill this guy horribly. You don't want to believe that. You never want to believe that. So I understand where these theories come from, but I don't think they're accurate. And unfortunately, there was so little evidence that police had a really hard time figuring out who did this. Ed Lamertz, one of the officers who was actually called to the scene and recovered Sam's body, believes that Sam will never be identified despite the fact that Canada has spent over $1 million in efforts to solve this case, including having his body exhumed multiple times. The first time his body was exhumed was in 1979, and a forensic pathologist named Dr. Clyde Snow from Oklahoma was brought in to reconstruct the skull in order to help with identification. Dr. Snow took numerous measurements of his skull and bones and input the information into a computer program which indicated that Sam was likely an aboriginal heritage and approximately 35 years old, disputing the original claims that he had been a 28-year-old white male. And that revelation completely changed the course that this case was taking. Originally, they were comparing Sam to missing white males who were around the age of 28, and after this new information, they had to completely change the route they were taking and start comparing Sam to missing aboriginal males around the age of 35. And in light of this new information, new theories begin to arise on what actually happened to Sam. And now many believe that Sam was the victim of a hate crime, given the way indigenous people were treated in Canada and some would say are still treated in Canada. But even with this new information, investigators still weren't able to identify who Sam was. DNA samples were taken and facial reconstructions were posted in various newspapers around the country. And Alberta's chief medical examiner's office has also done extensive work on the case, including releasing a computer-generated picture of Sam in 1995 and an updated facial reconstruction model in 2001. He has also been compared to over 250 missing persons reports, and his dental records have also been sent to over 800 dentists in Canada. And this actually brought up a very big question that I was seeing a lot in the research I was doing, reading through comments and things of that nature. A lot of people were wondering, since it was never officially stated, if they also sent these dental records to the United States. Especially since Sam was considered transient and not from Alberta, it's very easy to believe that he may have been from the northern parts of the United States and then crossed into Canada where he found his way in Alberta. But I just thought that was a very good question to ask and I couldn't find any information that answered that question on whether or not they actually sent these dental records to the United States as well. I think from what I understand, from what I know, it's strictly they strictly sent these, this dental information around the country of Canada. But a sample of Sam's DNA has been stored by police in case it's ever needed to be tested against a possible family member. But the search for his identity and the identity of his killer or killers is actually still a mystery and the case is still ongoing. And Miss McLeod, who was one half of the couple who discovered Sam's body, later said, This guy belongs to somebody. Somebody somewhere knows what happened. And to think if we hadn't gone looking for the pump that day, he may have never been found. And she's right, someone knows what happened to Sam. And to think that if they weren't so frugal and they hadn't just went out and bought a new septic tank pump, no one would have known the story of what happened to the two-field John Doe. Now as far as what theories I believe, I believe the last theory I gave to you guys, which is that he was the victim of a hate crime. I know it's kind of crazy to think something that severe could happen to someone just due to someone else not liking them, but we all know that that is something that is possible. Looking back at the history of the world altogether, things like this have been going on, maybe not this specifically, but hate crimes have been going on forever. And for some people, all the justification they need for killing someone and severely mutilating them and torturing them is the fact that their skin is a different color than theirs. And I for one don't believe that that's something that's ever going to change. As long as there's more than one skin color that someone can have, there's always going to be people who judge people because of that. But to think that something this horrible can happen to someone due to the color of their skin, you hear about it in history books, you read about it on your own, but to continuously see this happen in 1977 and 2011, it's 
it's it's horrifying and it's something that in a perfect world wouldn't happen but unfortunately we're not in a perfect world but that's all i have to say about this case let me know what you guys think about this let me know if you guys have any theories other than the ones that i talked about in this video about what happened to sam i'd love to hear them and i don't know if i mentioned this but this video was actually a requested video by one of you guys in the comments and i wanted to let you know that even though i might not like the comment or like hard it or anything i do see them sometimes i just forget to like it and do all that stuff but i do see you guys requesting them and i i will get to all those videos that you request i promise you but until then i hope you guys continue to have a great day great week great month great year and i will catch you next video